What is up, guys? I hope everyone is okay and is good. So let me try to remove these parts around programming and resetting and changing cells. Anyways, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on my desk. This is getting out of hand. I don't need to clean it up. The weird thing is that I did clean up a few days ago. Yeah, I think like like two days ago. Yeah, two days ago I was cleaning up the entire office. So here we are today. This laptop is not charging, so I am quite sure at this point I've recorded a lot of videos explaining how to fix this. So the simplest way is to change the MOSFETs. The two first the first two MOSFETs, the second one usually. So I wanna explain what happened here. So if you take a look at this one, yeah. BF, 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 my friend, BF. So if you take a look at this one, you can clearly see that this technician, because I'm not the one who fixed this, I received it from one guy, he fixes laptops. So this technician simply put a jumper wire over here. Yeah, most people they know that trick. If a laptop is not charging or is not switching on, is not switching on from the charger, but only working from the patch, you jump there. Most people they know that, but there is a high chance that a lot of people don't know why. So I'm gonna grab a pen and paper, then I'll try to explain that. So typically speaking, we have got. Uh, a circuit which looks like this so you have got your charger your brick 19 volts or whatever the voltage is so you've got your positive and you got, you've got your negative like that so your positive comes in and so does your negative but then when it comes in via the charging port we can just uh, put a circle there. Let's say that's a charging port. Uh, port. It goes out from there. Don't mind my handwriting. I was never good. I was probably supposed to be a doctor. <laughs> Jokes. But yeah, I did love biology, by the way. Anyways, when it comes into the charging port, some designers they will put a fuse. So we'll put that as F1. Or some will put uh, an inductor. We can put that as L1. Yeah, so some will put a fuse, let me say fuse one, or some will put an inductor which will be labeled as L. So from the fuse, it will then come to an option where it goes into the first MOSFET, then out of the first MOSFET into the second MOSFET, and then out of these two, there is a resistor then out it goes into the rest of the laptop as your 19 volts main power rail oh i didn't notice it's now out of the picture power rail so so it's typically like this you've got your charger you've got your charging port then you've got your first second so i would label that as q1 on a, on a schematic diagram mosfets are labeled as q inductors are labeled as l so like I said, it's either it's a fuse or it's an inductor, depending on the manufacturer. So if it's an inductor, what it helps with is when you plug a charger and you're still shaking it, uh, you know that 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 19, 0, 19, 0, 19, 0, as you're shaking the charger, trying to squeeze it in, the inductor kind of like uh, smoothes, smoothes it in. And the same, same thing works also with these MOSFETs. They also help with that when you're trying, when you're like shaking it in they they help in a way but that's not really what they are meant for and then you've got your resistor there which will be r1 so we usually call this a current sense resistor current sense so now these two remember a mosfet is like this a mosfet is the is simply a transistor with three terminals you've got your source you've got your drain and you've got your gate so now the gate for these two MOSFETs will be connected to a chip. 
something like that which we usually call a pq a pqic usually it's a pqic it can be sometimes an inter seal or something else but yeah usually a pqic so that pqic it also receives the 19 volts because it has to be powered up at the same time it's connected to ground so your ground does continue all the way and then your pqic has got connections that come over here by your current sense resist so that it knows what is happening on the output so it's like it can detect how much current your machine is using anyways that, that those are not really important the most important ones are these ones coming to the gate of q1 and to the gate of q2 so when you plug a charger the 19 volts comes to the pqic but then for this mosfet to be active because remember the mosfet is like a switch the switch is on and off so for this mosfet to be switched on so that current can flow through it needs to receive a signal at the gate so the pqic will boost that 19 volts and send 25 volts over here 25 volts and 25 volts over there so when it sends the 25 volts to this mosfet it then opens the, the the switch and current can flow through and you get your 19 volts here again sends 25 volts to this one then it goes out as 19 volts again so if the pqic is not sending 25 volts here these two mosfets go dead but then remember this is an intelligent ic it's an integrated circuit so it can tell if one of the two is dead if it's shorted out so if one of the two is shorted out it simply cuts the other one it switches the other one off so now remember it does have a connection coming to here and yeah it does have a connection coming to here as well i believe i'm not so sure but yeah sometimes they do put a connection which comes over here and sometimes they don't so it can tell if there's got a, a direct shot between this side and this side or if there's if you've got a direct shot between the gate and the drain gate and the source similar with uh, q1 so if there's any issue with these two mosfets the pqic can tell and it switches the other one which is left working it switches it off or if you've got a dead shot on your main power it can tell because remember it's connected to ground and it is also connected there so if you've got a dead shot it can tell and if it manages to detect that there's a short or there's a dead component there's a lot of connections actually there's some resistors and capacitors which come with this feedback wires and stuff like that so it always knows what is happening around so if it detects any issue it switches off the mosfets so that's why you will find out that if these mosfets got dead you can still use your laptop with the battery because the battery is not it's not really related to the pq it is so that in the sense that the charging ic's the charging mosfets they are also connected to the pq ic but as for the battery you're working with the laptop as long as there's no short here the laptop will still function fine but if these two are dead the laptop will still function fine but it, the, it will not charge because the power is no longer coming from the charger into the rest of the laptop so that's the same situation we're facing over here so what is simply happening is that this mosfet is dead the second mosfet usually it's the one that goes dead and when it goes dead it just has got a direct shot in between so which means your source your, your source and the train are now one connection there is no separation between, between the two so when it does like that the pqic detects that and then it switches off the first mosfet so if we come and we check on our motherboard now so there is our first mosfet and there is our second mosfet and there is our current sense resistor so if we check if we check so the only the, the the way to check for mosfets if they are working you put your mouth meter in beep mode then you check the source and the drain you check the connection between the two so i am struggling to fit the probe underneath there because i don't think there's any connection really so what we know is that from here it goes to the current sensor resistor so i'll simply just put it over there and over there and you can hear the buzz this MOSFET is dead. So that is why this technician decided to put a jumper cable over here. So they simply just put a jumper cable here because the MOSFET over here was now switched off by the PQIC because it could detect there's something wrong up front. So when it switched the MOSFET off, the laptop could not charge, could not take any power from the charger. 
until that issue was fixed. So this technician simply removed that MOSFET and put a jumper wire. And remember, this one is dead already. It's also it's now the same as a jumper wire. So you simply have got your 19 volts coming from here to the current sense resistor. So what the technician simply did is they took a cable from here, our trade in dotted lines, and they jumped it all the way to over here. That's what they simply did. They excluded this whole circuit. But remember, the PQIC is an intelligent circuit. And like I said, it is connected to the charging MOSFETs, which are meant for charging the battery. So I think I've drawn a circuit like that before. It might not be as accurate, but it will work. So, as you can see from this other circuit, you've got your 19 volts coming from the charger, then you've got your fuse, first, second MOSFET, then the current sense resist, you've got your PQIC over there. But then you also have got these two MOSFETs, which are meant to go and charge the battery. So the PQIC is also the same chip which is controlling these two. If there's an issue over here and you bypass the same way that this technician did, these are still switched off. In some designs, they are not switched off, but in some, they are switched off. So in, like in this case, they are now switched off and the laptop is not charging the part. So as much as it's working, the main power goes all the way to the 3.3 to 5 volts and whatever. But the laptop is not charging because these two are switched off by the PQIC because there's an issue somewhere over here. That is the whole situation that we're facing here. Customer says the laptop does work, but it is not charging the part. So what I'll simply do, I'll remove the second PQ chip and I'll replace with uh, one which is over here. And I'll replace them both. Although in this other one, uh, the first one I'm just putting it there, I'm not replacing it, it's already off. So yeah, uh, I hope that was clear enough. I actually, yeah, I don't know if I explained it well enough. Anyways, I'm just going to put some kept on tape there because I do not want to bend the casing for this customer. Not just the casing, but as you can see, there is a there's an LCD connector over here. So yeah, that is that is one thing that we do not want to melt because fixing that is not going to be fun. It will be fun actually, but like it is not going to be fun in the sense that it could have been avoided. And yet we chose to be stupid when we have all the resources that we need. Aibo, put us. Go in, please, Kalo. Okay. So, there we go. I'm just going to remove the second MOSFET now. Oh, wow. That was me melting my own hand. This tweezer is not getting bad. Oh yeah, I remember it broke the other day. So one side is shorter than the other one. That is why I'm trying to create components. I'm gonna buy more tweezers of this type. I do have another tweezer though. But I prefer to use that when I'm working on small, small components. Like the light, light components. Okay, so we're gonna remove this jumper wire as well. So, yeah, as much as you can use uh, MOSFETs and, uh, yeah, as much as you can use MOSFETs from another laptop, even if it's not the same model and design, it is wiser to use from the same model because you know that the configuration is the same. Because you know that the configuration is the same and the uh, components used are the same. So that's why it's best to just use components from a similar or same motherboard. Yeah, my hands are not in a comfortable position because I'm trying to avoid the camera. So I'm going to struggle a little bit to place the components. But it shouldn't be too much of a struggle. 
really like components are easy to replace like mosfets come on that is that is one of the easiest things to replace because it's big big and it's got a huge surface at the bottom like yeah a huge surface for you to play around with i mean look at this all that silver surface is for you to play around with all you have to do is to make sure that the four pins are connected to the right point you don't want to be shorting this uh the gate and any of the source and drain pins so yeah but otherwise it is pretty simple and straightforward so they didn't bring the laptop with a battery but by just plugging a charger i should be able to tell if the laptop is drawing any current of which it is because it's now drawing 20 milliamps as you can see it's supposed to be drawing 10 milliamps but one of these cables has got some resistance because it used to be at zero 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 but even if i disconnect nowadays it's always at 0 0.0100101 so yeah so when i plug a device it goes up to 20 milliamps instead of 10 milliamps so there's that extra one uh, that extra 10 milliamps coming from something else. I'm looking for a battery. I'm just going to test with this one. I don't know if this battery works, but these batteries never die really. They do, but it's rare. So there we go. And you can see there's an orange light over there now. And coming this side, we are now drawing 0 0.5 uh, 1 milliamps so yeah we're drawing half an amp now the battery is 